नमस्ते वेलकम टू यू जी सी ई पाठशाला फॉर पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट स्टडीज आई एम अनिता खन्ना एंड आई टीच जैपनीज इन जवाहरलाल नेहरू यूनिवर्सिटी एंड टुडे वी विल स्टडी फ्रॉम पेपर फिफ्टीन द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ प्री मॉडर्न जैपनीज लिटरेचर the module on the barber houses of the floating world background ukiyoburo or the barber shop of the floating world is one of the masterpieces of humorous books or kokkebon of edo period these were located along side the bath houses of the floating world ukiyo buro as we know the public bath has been a part of the life of japanese people and in a city like edo the bath houses were paired alongside the barber's shop and the clients also regularly visiting such places of daily use and developed a sense of community or became like social hubs the bath houses of the floating world are well talked about subject whereas today i will take up the topic of barber shops of the floating world objective the objective of studying this module is to have a deeper understanding of these barber shops which were a center place for interaction of all kinds of people merchants their servants as well as other clients who would visit the barber shop after having a bath or it could be vice versa as well because in this work there are instances when instead of waiting long for the haircut the client opts to go to the bath house and take bath instead of waiting there so through this work we can understand the variety of people especially common people visiting the barber shops and discussing or gossiping about social life of those days although there is no plot and continuity in this it's a collection of episodes which are provided the unity in the sense of visitors to the barber's shops about the author shikite samba the author of this work ukiyo doko or the barber houses of the floating world is shikite samba he came from a middle class merchant family and this was the period when writers of popular fiction called gesaku took it as their karma in the present world to entertain through their writings with interesting writings based on the life of people especially the towns people and a part of their daily routine of those towns men were the public places like public baths and barber houses Sure enough he has scribed one work which is ukiyo furo in other words the bath houses of the floating world and thereafter he could not refrain from scribing another spot of the public interaction of the middle class or common people which is the barber houses or the barber shop 
both his works ukiyo buro and ukiyo doko the bath house of floating world and the barber's shop of the floating world were specially enjoyed by the educated urban people of edo and presented with an attractive cover page with a catchy illustration so as a specimen of this unique age and the writer's unique style we study the first volume of the work ukiyo doko the barber shops of the floating world which has three volumes the first volume has a preface and we study it through its english translation ukiyo doko barber saloons of the floating world or barber shop of the floating world the famous chinese saying that the importance of anything depends on the utility of its beholder at times a cloth of a yard may seem less whereas a tiny piece of 1 inch fabric may be too long for the purpose and it goes on to describe about the barber saloons of china stating i read now when it comes to the hairdo styling be it the hair saloons of ming china called tote ten or barber shop of japan known as kami yui doko the difference is only in the name whereas the basic sentiments of people visiting these public places are the same needless to say that the fashion trends and styles may vary from time to time and place to place chinese on one hand admire dense but soft and silky baby hair in the style of a bonz now what chinese find elegant japanese may look down upon it and find the same style as uncouth or rustic likewise people have different ways of looking at things be it the chinese scholars of confucianism or japanese scholars of national learning yet today the japanese specialist of confucianism shower praises on chinese scholarship and count on it which is uncalled for it is like taking pride unduly in others possessions in chinese poetry there is a famous poem on a lady's hair in the chinese praises the beautiful hair of lady using the metaphor her shining silver hair 3000 feet long it is evident that the chinese poet is eulogizing her hair and has used the length of 3000 feet as a metaphor which according to the japanese author is in proportion to china's vast land but the writer says that the japanese learned people are critical of it especially 3000 feet long hair sound unrealistic here to the japanese learned men opine that such unrealistic metaphors are of no use and giving example of a famous japanese work or rather a popular japanese work he points that in the work of kokuji kai 
that explains the origin of Japanese characters and terminology. There they quote example, saying that if a man with broad forehead, the writer goes on to point the case of a Chinese legendary character with a typical broad forehead who sacrificed his life to avenge his father's death as and was called Mikenjaku because of his broad forehead. Now, according to the Japanese learned man, if any man with a broad forehead is called Mikenjaku, our masters will be unable to react or our masters wouldn't know how to react to it. Likewise, the one with long side locks, shiken bin. Long is shiken and side locks bin is called bin shiken. In other words, the name of ten one of the ten followers of Confucius, then our masters would be aghast. In the Japanese classical works, also there are such examples. For example, in Kojiki, there is the legend of Kaminaga Hime, a princess with long hair. She belonged to Omi province in Shiga prefecture. And her hair is described to be so long that it could be wrapped around Mount Kaneyama, Mount Kanayama seven times. The folk song based on this theme became very popular hit. So much that people got fed up of it. The writer Shikite Samba continues. The Japanese scholars of national learning, Kokugaku, take pride in the imperial family as a symbol of Japanese spirit. One of the scholars of national learning claims that the term Kami Dono is abbreviation of Kami Yui Tono. Tono is a Japanese suffix to mean a lord like Tono Sama. So, if we consider that, then the translation of this will be His Highness the Barber. Likewise, there is another synonym for a barber or a pen name for barber, which is Hitsuji. Hitsuji is sheep in English. So here the pun is made not because sheep is hairy, it has a lot of hair, but it has a different connotation. Now what is this connotation? According to writer, the first letter he means day, implying that hair is done up daily, every day. Tsu of Hitsuji stands for moon to indicate the lunar cycle of month to imply the monthly payment contract with the barber as Japanese had. Now what does G stand for? The author questions any guesses and then he comments even the greatest master would be at a loss to answer this and continues well let me explain a barber is on his toes all throughout the day in order to do his job. This prolonged standing can cause the problem of piles. And that is why the pen name for barber is Hitsuji. In other words, for this daily job of hairdo for which the payments are contractual. The barber has to stand for long hours and can have piles which is implied by the word or the third letter G. He 
Tsu and Ji. Three letters. The third meaning, blood. Chi or blood. The author goes on to give another explanation for this word of Hitsuji. According to him, Ji is the aspirated form of Shi, the latter meaning work or occupation, Shigoto, Shi. In Japanese, the extra sign that is used to make a letter voiced can also denote that the original letter she in this case is corrupted or spoiled. So here it denotes that the oil smeared clothes and turbid appearance of the barber because of the this job make him look like a sheep or sheepish. So, in the text, Shikite Samba continues like this Hitsuji or sheep used to denote barbers could have a deeper connotation rather than the surface meaning of the word Hitsuji. The standard charge for visiting a barber shop is 32 mon about 160 yen for one sitting and for this paltry amount one has to bear with the whims and fancies of each client. By visiting the barber's shop one can have a glimpse of the life of the floating world of Edo which is Tokyo. Each client has a freak taste which is a statement of his personality. For example, Gikuya Itofu style of long hair as well as for short hair. The punchline is that everything has a utility of its own that is realized at the time of need. A gisaku writer, in other words a humorist, portrays the qualities and shortfalls the complexities of human mind in a lighter way in order to make people laugh. In all humility, I must admit that I am a man of modest talent who has ventured on this long work with my tiny brush. Like a barber wets the brush, I like, I also ink my worn out bald brush and begin to pen this volume while waiting for my turn at the barber's shop. Sure enough, the writer is pointing at the calligraphy for which one needs ink and brush and which was the writing styles of most of the people. So the writer Shikite Samba gives the date of 10th May of 8th year of Bunka era. The 8th year of Bunka era corresponds to the year 1811. In other words, he starting penning this work on this day. And Ukiyo Doko was first in first volume was complete in Bunka tenth year, which is eighteen thirteen. Shikite Samba's works present humor in two ways. In some works the humor is prominent, whereas in others the realism is preferred and it dominates. And ukiyo doko is the second type of work. It can be paired with the ukiyo buro or the bathhouses of the floating world as well. Unlike the work called 
बाथ हाउसेस ऑफ द फ्लोटिंग वर्ल्ड्स और उके बुरो इन दिस वर्क द फोकस और द लोकेलस द बार्बर सैलून्स और बार्बर शॉप इंस्टेड ऑफ पब्लिक बाथ एंड नीडलेस टू से इट वॉज स्पेशली द बार्बर्स और हेयर ड्रेसर सैलून वॉज अ सेंटर ऑफ द सोशल लाइफ ऑफ दोज डेज स्पेशली अमंग द ऑर्डिनरी पीपल एंड सो ही हैज चोजन द मोस्ट एप्रोप्रिएट सेटिंग फॉर पोट्रेइंग द रियलिटी ऑफ द ह्यूमन माइंड द करेक्टर्स as well as the dialogues and style of language is also lucid and lacks in depth the characters speak the story revolves around their dialogues which are given in the form of short notes or dialogues or rather one can say people in these works meet and part but there is a short also the writers of the age as well as woodblock printers were influenced by these locales the sketches of barbers shops and a modern writer nagai kafu especially the has referred to it in his works